If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving the question is to draw a free body diagram of the two blocks. In the first free body diagram, which is of the smaller block with the lowercase m, we have four forces acting. We have the downward gravitational force. We have the upward static frictional force being exerted on block little m. And then we have the applied force pushing the block to the right. We've labeled that F. And then there is a reaction force pushing back against the small block. For the free body diagram of the larger block, we have only three forces. We've got the downward gravitational force. We have the normal force of the ground pushing up on that larger mass. And then we have the force of the smaller block pushing up against the larger block. Notice that this force, the one we just described, is equal in magnitude to this force. They're actually an action-reaction pair of forces. And they come about because the smaller block is pushing against the larger block, and as a result, the larger block pushes back on the smaller block with an equal but oppositely directed force. We recall that the static frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by what is usually labeled as a normal force. In this case, we have to be careful how we interpret what is known as the normal force here. For the block labeled with lowercase m, there really isn't a normal force per se, because we usually associate a normal force with the ground pushing up on the block, and of course, the smaller mass is not even touching the ground. But in this case, for the smaller block, we do have, in essence, what can be considered a normal force, because we have the larger block pushing against the smaller block with that reaction force. So really, rather than a normal force, we can use the reaction force F prime. What we will do next is apply Newton's second law to both blocks together. We will treat them as a single system. And when we do that, since the surface is frictionless, the only force that's causing acceleration on the system is that applied force F. So we can replace the sum of the forces with F. And then, of course, the mass of our system would be the combined masses of the small block and the large block. We'll go ahead and solve this equation for acceleration by dividing both sides by the term M plus capital M. And this is a result that we're going to hold on to and refer to shortly. We will next apply Newton's second law in the x direction to the smaller block. In the x direction, we have the positive applied force F and the negative reaction force F prime, and that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. We just found an expression for the acceleration, and so we can make a substitution. And then we can add F prime over to the right-hand side. We've held on to the Newton's second law equation for the smaller block right here. Now, we'll go ahead and apply Newton's second law again on the smaller block, but this time in the y direction. We'll notice there are only two forces acting in the y direction. We have the upward and therefore positive static frictional force and the downward negative gravitational force. Now, since the small block is not accelerating in the vertical or y direction, we know that the acceleration is equal to zero, and so the right-hand side will become zero. Let's also recall that the static frictional force was equal to mu s times f prime. What we'll do next is solve this equation for f prime. So we'll add mg over to the other side and then divide by mu s. And that expression for f prime can be substituted into the other Newton's second law equation that we developed for the small block in the x direction. We're going to go ahead and clean up the workspace next. Now we recall that the question is asking for the minimum magnitude of that horizontal force F required to keep the smaller block from slipping down the larger block. So we have an equation that we need to solve for F, and perhaps we can do that by subtracting this term to the left-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, we can see that what we're trying to solve for, capital F, appears in both terms, so it can be factored out. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by this bracketed term. We can finally go ahead and plug in all the known values. Remember, lowercase m was given to us, as was uppercase m. g, of course, is 9.8, and then we have the coefficient of static friction given in the question as well. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get approximately 4.9 times 10 to the power of 2 newtons, and that is the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to email your own question to the address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.